In previous videos, we've shown you how to carpet line the inside of your camper and also how to prepare and carpet line a ply panel ready to put on the inside of your van. I'm Lee, this is Coombe Valley Campers and today we're going to be showing you how to carpet camper van furniture, be it a box or any other obscure shape. As a bit of a backstory then, these boxes were made by our cabinet builder next door to the customer specification. These are going to be used as buddy boxing, buddy box slash seating area for a VW T3 T25 camper van and we'll show you them inside the van later. The customer specified that they wanted them carpeted as opposed to the bare plywood, so um, we need to carpet them. We've already done the lid. And as you can see, we've carpet lined nice and neatly around the edges without hitting this inner framework so the box lid can still fit within the frame it's meant to. So the next job we need to do is carpet line the exterior of this box, taking in this top edge and also incorporating the carpet onto the bottom because the flooring in the van itself is carpet too. So once you've got carpet on the bottom of that, the actual piece of furniture won't move. And what we've got is a box that we prepared earlier. Um, this one we did a little while back, um, but we've been waiting to make a video for you, um, which is why we haven't carpeted the other one so far. So if you take a look at this box here, we've actually carpet lined all the way up to that edge. And the same with this lid, we've carpet lined up to that edge so we can actually fit the boxes together. They will have a nice, almost seamless appearance. And we've also incorporated the carpet onto the bottom. It's a little bit grubby now, but we've also incorporated the, incorporated the carpet onto the bottom so that furniture won't slip on the carpet floor that's already fitted into the van. So how do we do it? Let's get straight to it. For today's video, you are going to need a piece of furniture to carpet, some four-way stretch or vel trim carpet lining material, some high temperature spray adhesive, a knife with fresh sharp blades and also a mask as the vapours from these tins can be harmful. We've already covered carpet lining a van and ply panels in great detail in two of our previous videos. You can either find them up here or down in the description where we've got a playlist on how to build your entire day van or camper van. What we're going to do with this one then is actually wrap it up like a box but we want to do it seamlessly so there's no nasty joints. So to that end what we're going to do is start our carpeting on this corner. Now you might think that's a little bit daft because you know corners can grab um, and that's true however it's going to be a lot cleaner to put an edge down on this here on this corner rather than in the center of this point or this point because at the end of the day these are going to be stationary for most of the time in the van and you can always position the corner that you want least affected into one edge or the other of the interior so um, and also if this if you are carpeting a permanent fixture of the van you can always make sure to conceal that edge or start carpeting that edge that is going to least be seen but for this one, I'm gonna lay out the carpet and then we'll show you how it's laid out and stuck to the box. The lining material we are gonna be using today is this four-way stretch van lining carpet. Um, it's not actually carpet like you'd use in a house, obviously. It's more of a, a strong felt, but you know which side to work with because it's got this slightly rough uh, textured side, one side. That is the side you're gonna be putting your adhesive on and the fluffy soft to touch side is the side that's going to be exposed that you can see. I'm going to lay this out now and we'll get the box in. First thing you're going to need to do then is measure up your area or at least lay out the carpet over the piece of furniture you want to apply it to. In this instance I've laid out the carpet which is about two meters on the roll, a roll width is about two meters and what I've done here I've actually spaced out the box and turned it over until I've actually measured out. It actually fits 
it's just a little bit short. But because it's four way stretch, and this particular box, um, as I'm applying the card bit, I can just stretch it out a little bit and it will reach that end that we showed you earlier and it'll actually make a beautifully neat finish and we can still um, be resourceful with the carpet. We don't have to take a big chunk out of you know, a long edge or something like that. So in this case, we've got the box um, mocked up against the edge that we want to start from. We're gonna leave a little bit of excess at the top so we can fold it over and trim the excess off here. And we're gonna leave a little bit on the bottom um, in order that we can fold the box in, fold the bottom carpet lining in much like a present. We're basically wrapping a present here today, but with a carpet lining material as opposed to wrapping paper. Um, so go back a month or so, go back to Christmas time. Let's wrap up the present with this carpet today. Um, but we're just gonna be sticking it down with a slightly different method. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So I've marked out where I want to cut and I'm not gonna cut with my blade directly onto the table surface. I've actually got well, we use these as kneeling mats, but they're actually great for um, cutting. So if you're inside a van and you want to cut a piece of carpet, it's a great actual, great surface. Or just put a bit of scrap wood underneath. Anything that's gonna stop you from damaging the surface you want. Um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, put something protective down. <laughs> okay, so I've got my new blade. I'm going to cut my carpet all the way along. If you feel the need to draw a line, it's a very good idea. I do carpeting and cutting day in, day out, so I'm fairly savvy with the knife and with the carpet now. Remove that out of the way. And we now have our piece of carpet ready to lay on the box. The glue we are going to be using today is this high temp spray adhesive. We use this for, for all of our carpeting and it's excellent for pretty much all the jobs inside your van that you want a carpet line. Um, we use this day in day out and it's available from most of the places you will buy this carpet lining from. In fact if you wanted to purchase some carpet we have a link down in the description for our shop at coombellycampers.co.uk where you can actually buy your own carpet. Don't forget to wear a proper respirator or mask when it comes to dealing with the glue. The vapors in it are nasty. So you don't want to get them, you don't want to be breathing them in. It says they are not carcinogenic, but they could be, or something like that on the tin. So um, PPE is always a good idea. So we've got our glue, got the face mask, got the carpet got the piece of furniture. Again, your your furniture may be static inside your van, depends, exact, depends how you do it. In this case, obviously, we've got the furniture on the bench. If it's too big to manhandle, make sure your carpet's in an area that's in plenty of space, or your furniture, sorry, is in an area with plenty of space, and then you can lay the carpet on top of this. But for now, we are going to spray our adhesive onto the carpet and the piece of furniture. This is a contact adhesive, meaning you've got to spray both surfaces first. So we'll spray an area about the size of one side, then we'll spray one side, and then we'll stick them both together. In fact, yes, that's exactly what we'll do. As I've already explained, we're gonna start our join on this edge, which is why I made sure there was lots of adhesive on that edge there. Um, I've left a small overhang, but that's because I want to use my fresh blade to make sure that it's got a really nice flush cut before we then glue up to it. So I'm pressing down nice and hard, so I know that that's got a full area of contact down there and the glue's really set in. Um, I'm now going to flip the box on its side, repeat the same for all four sides, and when I get to this point, we'll bring it back.
When you're laying down the glue on the surface or the actual material itself, you wanna make sure you get a nice, even, full coverage. You don't need to be spraying really hard in one point, you just, or having it too far up here because it all lands all a bit stringy. You want just a nice, even coat as you've seen me do. Don't then slap the carpet straight on when the glue's still wet. What you wanna do is wait for the vapor from the tin, sorry, the solvent in the tin to vaporize. Um, and so you get a slightly tacky feel on the glue on both pieces. And then you simply fold it over and glue on. When you are gluing onto the surface, so in this instance, we're gonna start from this edge and we're gonna to work towards the other edge. Um, I'm gonna keep the carpet in one hand under tension the whole time. So with this arm, I'm gonna keep the carpet under, attention, under tension and with the other hand, I'm going to be smoothing that carpet out, but working from the center and then working to each edge as we're going along. So the carpet is now folded over and I'm sort of pinching it in this hand here, keeping it under tension. And then if you can see what I'm gonna do, so I've got the carpet pinched in my hand and I'm now gonna sort of use this edge as a backstop for the carpet. So I've got something to pull against rather than pulling there, I've actually got something to pull against. The carpet's nice and low against the surface, but it's still far enough away that if I make a mistake or you get a ripple, you can actually tug it straight back off again. We're making sure we've got this edge lipped over the edge of the box and this edge lipped over too. So again, you've seen I've whipped that off pretty much very quickly without it touching the surface. The glue's still tacky, it's still good to go. So we've got the tension, I'm bracing it up against the other edge. Now let's make a start. I'm gonna just using a thumb or the palm of your hand with your fingers, just making sure that carpet is smooth. All the wrinkles are worked out pulling it nice and tight the whole way. And again, like I said in my previous videos, if you do make a mistake, like if I glue a ripple in there, for example, that looks really bad, but I can rip that off real quick and smoothen that out with no real problems at all. All right, you wouldn't know there was ever a wrinkle there. So again, keeping attention, smoothing that out nicely, and don't be afraid if you make a bubble or a wrinkle. Believe me, I've made some serious mess ups with this in the past. Um, and you can just whip it straight off real quick. So that's the other edge done. Do the short side, the other long side, making sure we're pulling at the same time, because don't forget I said the carpet was a little short for all four sides. So we're gonna pull the carpet to make sure that that edge uh, will reach that other corner. So we've got these last two surfaces. This bottom surface and the long side is glued already. Um, and now we've laid it out and we're about an inch short, which we knew, but because this is stretch carpet, I know that if I pull it and actually stretch the carpet, which it's designed to do, I'm not affecting the carpet in any way. Once that is glued down entirely, look at that, just with a little bit of a pull, um, at a nice even tension, that carpet will now reach that edge with absolutely no problems at all. Okay, so before we go much further with carpeting this side, I just wanna trim this side off for you. In fact, because I'm right-handed, I'm just gonna spin the box. So we've got this edge here, and I want it to be completely flush. It's stuck down well, I know it's stuck down well, but what I want it, what I want it to do is be completely flush. So what I'm gonna do is basically make a slice into that carpet about here, and then I'm gonna run the blade all the way along that edge using this edge as a guide. It's a brand new blade, so the cut should be really silky smooth. 
um, and I'm not going to put any real pressure on it. I'm just going to let the blade do the work. So I'm going to push the blade into the carpet there, holding it at attention. And as I slide the knife along, I'm going to be peeling the carpet away as well. So let's get that cut started there. That blade is now right up against that edge. I'm going to try and hold this without getting in your way. So that blade is now right up against that edge and I'm going to peel the carpet away as it cuts. And there we go, a completely flush cut of that carpet lining on that edge and that'll apply to all the edges that we do later. So now we're at a point that we can complete this um, outer wall of the box of the carpet. I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to use the same premise when it comes to trimming off that edge if I need to. Um, and I'll just stick the blade in one side and then run it nice and flush because we want a completely seamless uniform edge on all sides. Now all the sides are done, we're going to concentrate on the top and all we're doing is a, applying the same method on this edge and this edge here. Now, I know that I can clean up this wood later so I'm not too bothered about overspray and in fact in one of our daily transmissions we're going to be showing you how to clean glue off carpet and other surfaces. So look out for that. Um, in this instance, I'm not too worried about the glue getting on the inside because I can clean it off, but if you are precious about what's on the inside of your cupboard uh, or piece of furniture, make sure to either mask it off or cover it up with another piece of material or using maybe an offcut of carpet or card, you can use that against an edge as you spray uh, and that will protect um, the area that you don't want covered in glue. Um, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do because we're now carpeting this edge, I'm going to make four slices, one in each corner, so that's already got a slice, and then I'm going to give each edge a 45 degree angle because when the carpet is laid over, if, I, if you just zoom in on there Ali, you can see that that is going to be a 45 degree angle on that edge, again much like wrapping a present, I'm going to make it nice and neat and flush. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is make that one cut straight up this edge there and then we're going to cut a rough 45 with an aim to tidying it up when we stick the edges down. Once you're happy that all the uh, solvent has vaporized and you've got tacky edges on both, then starting with that leading edge, I'm just going to run my thumb over there nice and tight whilst giving a bit of tension to the carpet. So now we know that edge is stuck. And then starting from one end or even starting from the middle, you can thumb it in over the edge. And then once you're happy with that edge, you can use your blade in the same way as we did the other edge. I'm going to start my blade here, keeping that blade flush against the wood. You can give yourself a really nice flush cut all the way around. So, just three more sides to do. If you were a bit premature with cutting your edges like me, um, and you didn't do a proper 45, um, you might have a little gap here in this corner. So there's another way you can do that. You can either wait until you've stuck one side down, then cut 45, discard that piece of carpet, then fold this bit down, then cut the 45 to match, or you can add a little infill piece in the edge like that. Um, and what we're gonna do is just sort of mask off this area that we don't want covered in carpet.
apply a bit of glue down there. Make sure we've got the right piece that we wanted to fill in. Apply, apply a bit of glue to the piece you want to fill in. Wait for the vapour to go. And then once you're completely happy, get that piece stuck down. And once all that glue's cleaned up, which is something we're going to show you how to do later, you'll never know. On to carpeting the bottom. It's much like carpeting the edges, although instead of trimming off around that edge, we're going to bring the carpet all the way up to this edge here. So what we're going to do is um, lay this piece of carpet down, then we're going to cut our angles to the edge, then we're going to fold each piece in, gluing it not over the edge but up to the edge, and then we'll be able to slice the carpet one on top of the other, and then when both are peeled, both are peeled away, you'll get a nice seamless edge on the bottom. All will become clear in a minute. So what I'm doing there is just using that piece we're going to fold over and just using it as a guide, as a ruler almost, once I'm happy with that edge. I'm just going to run my blade down the edge there and you can pull that away. So on to the next part. It's really important that you wait for that vapour to dissipate because um, I've done it before you lay it down on wet glue and it will just lift up straight away. So yes, you've got to wait a couple extra seconds, but patience is a virtue. There you go, nice and tacky now. So that edge is now glued well, that flap is now glued and that is the edge we're going to follow. Now I'm going to cut just slightly inward of that. So both of those areas are overlapped. So once I remove that bit, that's out of the way. And then I can remove this sliver of the previous edge we cut so now once that edge i've just cleaned it up early to show you but once that edge is cleaned up first cleaner line you're going to get they're butted right up against each other and they mimic each other completely now just to do the other two sides and we'll bring it back when it's done And there we have it, we have finished the box. We've done the bottom, we've wrapped it up like a present. We've done the sides where we started and finished on the leading edge. And we've also done that top edge, leading that, making sure that uh, middle section is free so we can fit our lid on. There we go. One completed piece of furniture covered in carpet liner. So we hope you enjoyed the video. There's actually one more section of this that needs to be put on. And that is a cushion that is made by our upholsterer next door, uh, David Powell. We've actually got these leading edges 
um, on here and they are going to have poppers on here and poppers on this edge so the cushion is completely removable but we will be filming a van tour on the van that this is going in and you can see all of this furniture and everything else we've done on this van in all its glory in an up and coming video. Thank you so much for watching today. If you'd like to follow us um, in between videos, we have our links to Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok now as well. And if you'd like to support the channel um, in terms of buying merch, we've got links at www.coombellycampers.co.uk and we've also got links to our Patreon there where you can support the channel and you also find discounts on merch there too. Thanks again, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.